I started teaching in the late 1900s in Illinois, and I was tasked with teaching eighth grade science. And I remember the first week, and I remember one of the parents telling me, how can you actually teach my child? It was like my first year of teaching. And the parent, oh my gosh, the parent, magnificent child, parents were wonderful, but they really did say, what makes you think you can teach my child? This was an affluent area in Illinois. This parent was a professor at one of the universities in Chicago, a medical professor, like for what do we call those med students? And he meant it. He like meant it. And I was a brand new teacher and I was a little bit older. And I actually said, you know what? I can't really prove that to you yet. But what I would like to do is get you the teacher's edition and give you the book. And I would love to observe you for the week. He actually never really responded to that, but it at least bought me some time because I was so new. And there's this idea that sometimes like teaching is easy. I can just do that. It, it is not easy. If you're an educator, you know, you should be like, yay. And you know that every year is different. And if you've been doing it for a while, it's a challenge. It's a challenge and it's fun and it's enlightening and students are great and they will do great things for you if they trust you. In this video, though, I want to talk to you about what I did over time as an educator, as a principal, and now as a um, leader in a school district. I'm looking at data. Like, what can you do as a teacher in the classroom and look at data so that you can help your students learn? What I realized it very early on was I needed to use the student data to inform what I was doing for a particular group of students and sometimes tailor it to one student. That is really difficult when you teach secondary. I was an eighth grade science teacher in Illinois, and at least in the late 1900s, yes, in the late 1900s, I had access to Microsoft Excel. So I could extract data and put this data in Excel and take test scores and group students based on how they did, which was very helpful. So I knew what I could do to tailor to students who really didn't really understand the concept and I needed to go back. So I tailored what I was doing. And sometimes the reteach would affect everybody. And maybe it was maybe five or six students. And if it was like a whole concept, a concepts like lots of standards, I would go back and possibly reteach a small group or talk to students and work specifically with those students, even when the other students were working on something else. What I learned is that students really appreciate when you can help them when they don't get it. And when the group of students can take a moment and say, you know what? I know that not everybody's gonna get this and other students respect that. Students are not the same as other students. Not everybody learns at the same rate. And that can be very difficult. So here's what I recommend. Like I'm gonna give you a, a couple of strategies on how you can use the data that you have to inform what you're doing. If you are whatever grade level you are and you have tangible data, maybe it's a specific standard, maybe it's an entire assessment, maybe a full exam at the end of maybe a unit study, take that information, take, take the data. This is the best thing that I could offer. In the state of California on our state assessments, the Smarter Balance Assessment in ELA and Mathematics, we look at the scores on a four point on a four point level scale, four exceeded, three met, two nearly met and one not met. What I would do with the exams or whatever um, test that you gave or whatever assignment, maybe it's a writing assignment, I would take all of their assessments and place them in piles. Four exceeded, three met, two nearly met and one not met. And then I would look at the group of students that didn't meet it at all from a different lens. The same with the nearly met, met and exceeded. Exceeded, I'm gonna move out of the way until the end because I may possibly want to accelerate those students a little differently because you do wanna do that. And you have two different groups on um, each side of the bell curve. The students in the middle, you can still tailor and work together, but you do wanna do something differently. Specifically look at those scores to see if there are patterns. Now, if you can throw it in Excel and sort it by what, test problems, they did, a lot of them did all of them right. You can focus on the ones they didn't do well and reteach. You can always look at this data and reteach. Now, because I don't know what assessment that is, you can decide what that looks like, but really look and dive into what is going on with the student. Maybe the student does really well on most assessments, but this assessment they bombed, 
you may want to talk to the student. You may want to ask questions with the student. You may want to ask the group in the, the classroom, like what happened on this test and have them give you feedback so that it can inform what you're doing in the classroom. Teacher collective efficacy is the highest effect size. This effect size measures how well a student can do when teachers collaborate and talk to each other. You can take a shared assessment, something if you're a science, ELA, math, whatever it is, maybe it's a research paper, you can bring in all of the work that students did, maybe one class period and compare it to another teacher's class period or group of teachers. And you can put them in those four piles that I just talked about, and then make sure the names are on and the period and the teacher's name is on it. And you start to put them in new groups compared to the other teacher's work and share insights on, well, how your students really did well on this standard. Mine didn't. What did you do in the classroom? When teachers start talking about student data and sharing insights, students do exponentially well. The effect size of 0.4 is basically one year of growth. No matter what happens, no matter what happens in the classroom, students are going to learn something in a year. So one year of growth. But 1.37, that's over three years of growth when teachers start sharing insights. When teachers start talking about data and looking at what they're doing and what works well for, say, me compared to what you're doing. I might be really good at molecular structures. You might be better at talking about atomic mass, the periods and groups on a periodic table, electron clouds. What, what does the left side of the periodic table um, look like when it comes to electrons compared to the right side of the periodic table? You That could be your gift. And you look at this assessment, I'm like, what did you do to get them to understand that? That is teacher collective efficacy, sharing insights and collaborating together. When you do that, I'm telling you, kids will learn exponentially. And one last tip, adjust your teaching strategies. It is okay to change them based on the group of students that you have. When you adjust what you're doing for what the group of students need in the classroom, your, your students will, will grow. Ask them to give you feedback. Accept feedback from maybe another teacher, maybe a teacher in another school site, the principal, based on what is happening. Maybe people see something when they do a walkthrough that you just don't notice. Maybe the engagement isn't as great in period two as it is in period three. Accept that feedback. What works in one class may not work in another class. What worked the year before may not work this year. It is really easy to have your lesson plans. Man, I I used to create create wonderful lesson plans. And I mean, a full anticipatory set all the way down to the evaluation. It was beautiful. I could tell you what students were doing and I could probably go into a file and pull that lesson plan out for the next year. But I needed to change it because student learning has changed over time. Students are learning faster. They have access to the world. They can understand more than they used to back when I was teaching in, um, in the classroom in the 90s. Yes, and in the 2000s. So just think about what that looks like when we're talking about teacher learning, student learning, and talking about strategies based on the data. Change what you're doing based on the data. Use data to identify student needs, collaborate with your peer teachers, have conversations about the data, and change your teaching strategies when needed. Sometimes we get so set on what we're doing that we forget that the goal is for students to own their learning. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Come back often and let me know how you're using data to inform instruction.